I would never have a house again without the solar and battery backup. This is how you do solar videos. Today, I'm standing on top of our friend's roof. We're taking a look at his Tesla solar. It doesn't even face due south. You're gonna be surprised by the results. He also has a power wall. We're gonna find out how much he's invested, how much he's saved, and what the payback's like. You've met our friend Brian over at T-Sport Line. Here, I can do this one myself. And you do it here, <laughs> then you work your way. He's like, please don't break my brand new okay. truck. He owns a Cybertruck, Model S, and Model Y. Exactly 12 months ago, Brian installed a 5.6 kilowatt Tesla solar array and a power wall at his house, paying a little over $23,000 for the setup. That's my actual roof, and this is what they proposed and it was gonna be 7.2 kilowatts. They had this cool thing where they like heat map your roof and tell you where the most sun is gonna come. Initially, Tesla suggested a larger system with additional panels on the front of the home, facing south, the ideal direction for solar gains. But Brian opted to place solar only on the back and sides of the home, the north and west sides for aesthetic reasons. We wanted to make this video to show you just how even the smallest array in a less than ideal spot can have significant benefits. So you can See, like the front of my house was really hot and the back was cooler. They started with this, but I didn't want to do it on the front of the house because I didn't really want to see it. It's all on the back of the house. So this is the final design, supposedly 18% energy offset. We'll check mm -hmm. the app and see if we're really living up to that. So they quote everything in this net cost, which factors in the federal tax credit. But ultimately the day it was done, I paid 23,466. Do you literally write them a check when they come out and yes. do it like that? Yes. And they are, they're very good communicators when it's time to pay. I mean, they were texting, calling, emailing. I'm like, I'm at work. I'll send you, yeah. I'll wire the funds this afternoon. And I had like multiple calls just to make sure I was going to do it. Thanks to Energy Sage for sponsoring this portion of the video. So if you've ever thought about adding solar to your house, you know how daunting that process can be. But Energy Sage is a 100% free online resource to help empower you to go solar. You get support from unbiased energy advisors to answer all of your energy questions, and there's no calls unless you want them. They've helped over 1 million homeowners find a solar installer. Energy Sage also gives you access to easy to use calculators so you compare all different quotes for solar all in one place. Their competitive marketplace helps you secure the best deal possible on solar and often gets you 20% savings over the broader market. Again, it's 100% free and it gives you transparent information to numbers so you can make smarter energy decisions. And if you've already got a quote from Tesla, you can actually upload that to Energy Sage and compare it to other installers. It's always good to get multiple quotes when you're gonna make a big purchase. If you're thinking about solar, don't do it alone. And also remember by clicking that link, you're also helping to support this channel. All right, let's get back to the video. 5.6 kilowatts solar. So right here and, and it's, over here. It's on the two roof panels. And then we have one power wall. We use the solar during the day. And then you have an option with the power wall. You can set up your solar system and your power wall where you can sell excess energy back to the state of Georgia. But we, we're never gonna make enough electricity with our solar. So we opted not to sell back so that we can buy electricity off the grid at night when they have the lowest price. Mm -hmm. So we fill up our power wall every night in the middle of the night. And then during the day, during peak, we use the power wall and the solar before we end up buying electricity from the grid during yeah, peak. Yeah, that's smart. So do you know, you've had it now for about a year? Yes. Um, do you feel like you're saving money? Yeah, now there's two, there's two elements to saving. Just solar generation, like straight up, what did we get from the sun? Yeah. It varies depending on the season. Brian says on the longer summer days, he's generated as much as 25 kilowatt hours per day, whereas the shorter, cloudier winter days will gather only five kilowatt hours of energy per day. He's been generating an average of $100 a month of electricity on his rooftop. Since we have the power wall fully charging every night and fully draining every day, we're accelerating that payback significantly. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about the power wall fills up every night at the cheapest energy price and then we turn it on during peak, the most expensive electricity use. So we're saving probably, I don't know, maybe $100 a month or more on the, with the power wall. We haven't, I haven't really done the math on that, but that's probably doubling our payback yeah. uh, or cutting our payback in half. The cool thing with the Tesla software, you just tell it 
to turn on the storm tracker and if the weather is predicting a storm, then it turns off using my power wall to power the house and it saves mm -hmm. all the power for battery backup. Have you had to use it? Have you had a time where you've lost power yet? Oh, all the time, or? yeah. It's really, I don't have to do anything. Like once it's set up, it's typical Tesla software, it just works. Power goes out, it seamlessly yeah. transitions to the battery. Like the, the lights don't even flicker. The power goes out and the battery switches instantaneously. We, the lights don't even flicker, the internet doesn't stop. It's pretty amazing. Have you thought about adding the Cybertruck or the Rivian and like having them kind of as like an additional power wall because yeah. they're kind of you can bi-directional charge with them? Yeah, we are. So there's a switch, which is what you're talking about. And yeah. we're, uh, our installer is coming back to put the switch in. So we have that too. Yeah, we'll have that as well. If you only have one breaker box in your house, your whole house is backed up. We have two separate breaker boxes. So we, we picked the one that had the refrigerator or the air conditioning, you know, basically the first floor. We charge at night. We have the car set up to charge again. Like after 11 p.m., the electricity goes down like one cent. It's really cheap in Georgia. So the cars are plugged in, but they don't charge until 11. And then they're fully charged, no problem every night. Power wall's fully charged by, I think, 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. It switches to peak power and everything's fully charged. How much is power during the day? I haven't even it's looked at it. It's like so 30 cents. I think it's like 30 times difference. Wow. When you decided you wanted to go with Tesla, did you look at any other companies or did you just want to do Tesla or what was that research Very briefly. Process? Yeah, very briefly. We, we looked at Generac. When I say looked at it, like we went on their website and requested a quote. But since we already had the Teslas and that's what I you know, do for a living with Tesla, I was pretty well set that I was gonna get the Tesla, but just out of pure curiosity, I wanted to see what the others offered. Mm -hmm. And I think the Tesla package with the seamless power turning on, you know, when the power goes out, knowing I had a power wall option and the solar had a good reputation, I didn't even really look too seriously at the others. Okay. So you were really interested in like the ecosystem. I wanted the ecosystem. I wanted to stick with Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. Plus our realtor told us that frankly, a Tesla Powerwall and solar system, like when you go to sell your house in this area is a, is kind of an up, it's a, like a nice upsell oh, interesting. advantage. I would never have a house again without the solar and battery backup. Okay. Yeah. I've had, I come from houses that had nothing. Power goes out. It's annoying portable generator, trying to run it to the refrigerator, that kind of stuff. Then at our last house, we put a natural gas generator in and it was great. But like I said, when the power went out, you had a minute and then it would come on. The nice thing with the natural gas generator is it would run endlessly. We had like a micro burst storm when we lived in that house and it knocked power out for a week and our house was running on the generator for a week. So that was amazing. You don't have that with the power walls unless you stacked up like a ton of them. Yeah. So, but we're in, you know, right in the heart of Atlanta. So I don't think the chances of us having power out for an extensive period of time is, is very likely. So you were all in with the solar and the power wall. 23.5. Okay. And that is before the? Before the federal tax okay. credit. So we should get like 7,100 to 7,500 back. Okay. So then what is your... How long will it take you? So if we get the that. federal tax credit and we get, you know, our our net cost was more like 16 ish, and we're saving $2,500 a year, then you're talking like six, seven year payback. You chose not to be able to sell it back. Yes. So you have two options. If you put the solar in, you can either sell your excess solar back to the grid, or not. I wouldn't be selling it back because if you sell it back, you can't charge your power wall at night and use it during the day because they don't want, the utilities don't want you to buy electricity at night mm -hmm. cheap and then sell it back to them during the day. So you, you have to pick either or. Mm -hmm. We opted not to sell it back because we'll never generate enough solar to make it worth selling it back. But that way we can buy electricity at night and use it in our house during the day. That's and we're, really we're never smart. selling back. Yeah, that's really smart because you're gonna and that, that that savings is probably going to be greater than selling it back, especially if you're not generating enough to be I able think, to sell back. Yeah, I think we make as much off the yeah. the purchasing of electricity off peak as we do from the solar generation. How long before you heard back from them? You got it installed? Like, what was that whole process like? Yeah, so it took maybe a few months for us to get 
from interest to, okay, we're approved to, to look at your house and we have installers in the area. And then there was probably another three months of here's the design, we need to get permits, all that kind of stuff. And Tesla did all of that. All I had to do was get on the phone once or twice and say yes or no on the front of the house. And then they filed the permits, they did everything. And then they called me and picked a date to come and they put the entire thing in in one day. Oh. And we were operational. And then we had to wait maybe a month or so for the city to inspect it and approve it. But it was operating in the meantime, just waiting for the city to say, yep, everything looks good, it's mm -hmm. approved. So all said and done, I mean, it was, it was a lot less, it was less than a year. Okay, and were there any hiccups in that process? Um, the only hiccups were really, we had a little bit of a hiccup after we installed it where something went offline and you know like with tesla you gotta you gotta kind of chase them for the service so i to get them back here was a little bit of a challenge but when they came back they fixed it and it's been flawless ever since all i do now is go in my tesla app and look at it occasionally and it's really cool if we look 1.1 from solar 4.3 from the power wall i'm not buying any electricity and the house is using 5.4 and if i click on any of these you can see like that's the solar today. Mm -hmm. So today I've generated 11.6 kilowatt hours. Yesterday was 14.2, it might've been cloudy. Day before was a lot sunnier, 18.2. This was a kind of a cloudy, rainy day, 15.3, 18.4 is a good one. So that's the solar. And then the house, like you can see at night, how it jumps up to 20 kilowatts, that's our vehicles charging. So during the day, these little peaks would be like the air conditioning turning on and off the refrigerator cycling. But you can kind of see like at nighttime, we jump up into charging. Now let's look at the power wall. Okay, so this is interesting. Today, you can see it was charging in the middle of the night. We started with full power and then at like 7 a.m. here, the power wall kicked in mm -hmm. and you can see how it's, it's running down as it's using the power. And then grid, you know, this will show we haven't bought any electricity since off peak last night. Yesterday, you can see how like we bought electricity and then when off peak hit right here, we went to our power wall, which is why there's no electricity bought until the power wall was out of juice. And then we started buying electricity again. So you can see like at night, mm -hmm. it's drawing the electricity to charge the power wall every night. And then if we go in the impact, so like 2024 so far, $175 solar offset. Mm -hmm. So that's how much we've saved from solar this year. What are your monthly power bills like? That's a good question. We got to ask Carissa that. <laughs> I don't watch it that close. Yeah, well, I mean, it's probably not worth watching. The fact that you don't have to watch it I, I did, w like when we put it in, I was watching everything. And mm -hmm. now that, like you said, it, it works perfect. We don't mess with it. Mm -hmm. like, and just it just goes and works but you're a year in once you got everything going it's been flawless it's been great yeah and if like you ever had to shut it down you know you've got this there's a reset button they showed me over here this is the power wall this is the solar unit and then there's a gateway over here that connects to our power box i can okay. show you yeah this is the gateway here basically the power coming from the power wall or the solar comes in here there's a disconnect this is the gateway that connects to the internet and then connects to our power. There's not a whole lot going on here. You can just, you have another mm -hmm. disconnect. So when they come through and do that upgrade with the Tesla Cybertruck, is that here? Or yeah, they'll put, a, they'll put a switch in here, which is one more box so that we basically have the ability to plug in a car mm -hmm. or plug in a generator. How much does that cost? He, he hasn't quoted it yet. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's gonna be real expensive. Um, we'll find out in a couple days. That's interesting. At this point, are you happy with the amount of solar that you have or would you yeah. add more? Um, I like, I'd like to add more. So you're limited on the roof, like how close you can get the panels to the edge of the roof from a code perspective. Mm. So we put the maximum on that we could. To get more on here, we would have to go to the front of the roof. Yeah. Or we add some panels that are maybe over the edge. Get rid of a tree and make a solar tree. And... Yeah. Adam, like cut sold. down trees yeah because yeah. you know that oh. <laughs> opposite of what you're trying to do right, with the environment right, right there <laughs>
All right, guys, if you've watched this far along, you've probably enjoyed this content. Please be sure that you're subscribed and we'll catch you next time. So it's pollen season right now. Yes. Have you had to clean them or do any kind of maintenance? We haven't yet, but I did clean my skylights over there and I noticed they had pollen on them. And when they did install it, they told me that, hey, it's solar light. So if it gets dirty or covered with leaves or pollen, it's going to degrade how much it puts out. So I'll probably take a look up there and see if I have to wash them off like we did to the to the skylights. Okay, do you notice any change with, compared to last year maybe, like right when you had them installed versus now? Yeah, it's a good question. So we put it in, it started in June of last year, which was like peak summer, longest days, biggest sun. So we were putting out more power back then than we are yet, but I am noticing this year, it's going up and up as days get longer. So come June, I'll be able to tell you, yeah. If it matches last year, we're good to go. If it's under last year, it's time to clean. Good school thought.